Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So following up from the discussion and the review video on the BlackBerry Priv the other day, I wanted to talk about something in the same vein that a lot of you probably never even knew about. See, the BlackBerry Priv was an excellent phone when they made it. A lot of things design-wise were really cool. I mean, the processor and the battery weren't really cool. Those were super hot and not in a good way. But BlackBerry actually had another patent for another sliding device that was supposed to be a BlackBerry 10 device. It was initially patented in 2012, and then they revised the patent in 2014, and it differed slightly in the way that the mechanics worked on the sliding phone, and it only had a three row keyboard, very much like the Passport, and it had two early code names being either Visa or Victoria. And I was just thinking about this the other day after I was looking at the Priv again, I thought maybe it would be cool to revisit this, talk about it, because a lot of people probably never even heard about it. So before we get into all this, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about this Blackberry that never happened. So when I saw this originally, this is something that popped up on Crackberry a couple other places back around 2012, 2014, 2015 timeframe and was revisited a few times. Originally the patent came out for it that BlackBerry applied for and this was before we even knew about the Priv. Now one thing about the Priv that I didn't like that this codename Visa or Victoria really improved on was the way the keyboard worked. So with the Priv, you have a recessed keyboard here. So whenever you take a look at it, the screen is up here, there's a raised edge for the speaker down at the bottom, and then there's like this little valley below that has the keyboard set up, and it's a traditional four row keyboard. So you got the alt, the shift, all that good stuff, and then the full three complementary rows of keys. And everyone I think at this point is very familiar with the Priv. Well, the Visa or Victoria, as it was so aptly called when they were working on it, had a different design. See, with the Priv, what happens is the screen slides up and away to expose the keyboard. Well, what happened with this patent for the Visa or Victoria, whichever you want to call it, the keyboard itself is what slid out. And there was actually a compartment underneath the screen. So what happened was the keyboard would be underneath it. And when you would pull it out, it would pop up, pivot, and then lock into place and be flush with the screen. So instead of being down here below the screen, it would be on level with the screen. And that would have alleviated so many problems that I had with the Priv. I did not like the keyboard. I didn't like the way that it was. Of course, this likely would have taken advantage of the software row of keyboard like the Passport had. So if you're familiar with the Passport, you know it has only three rows of keys and it doesn't have the alt, no shift, no numbers on the letters. All that was on the bottom portion of the screen on the Passport. So it would pop up when you would type and you would see those symbols or numbers that it would predict and put up there for you based off of what you were doing. So it was kind of an interesting concept and I liked the idea of this. I remember when they were talking about it because I thought, sweet, when they initially talked about it in 2012, I thought it was going to be a BlackBerry 10 device. And even in 2014, the revised one, I thought it was still going to be BlackBerry 10. But then apparently they kind of scrapped all of that went with the Priv design and launched that as an Android phone and we got what we see here today. But I always thought that it was cool. I wish that it would have gotten made and it's just something that popped in my mind the other day because I knew about this. Like I, I thought it was really gonna be a cool idea. I thought it was gonna happen. And if you were following things back when BlackBerry 10 was really exciting, it just came out, all the devices were coming out. You got the Z10, you got the Q10, the Classic, the Passport. There was a lot of exciting devices that were made back then. So I always thought this was a cool idea. I wish that it would have happened because yeah, I really didn't like the Priv design that much. I liked the Priv design as a slider, but I didn't like the keyboard itself. And this is even a topic of conversation I've had before in live streams and also in other videos discussing the viability of this this actual platform and this design because yeah, there are three different types of designs when you come to a BlackBerry. You have the all touchscreen design, enter stage left, the Z30, the BlackBerry Motion, the BlackBerry Leap, the, the Z10. There were a lot of really good all touchscreen BlackBerries. And then you also had the 
very much classic design with the keyboard. You had the Q10, the Classic, the 8800, the Curb, there were uh, the Passport. There were so many different variations of the physical keyboard. And then you had the really special design, which was, ta-da, the sliding phone. And the sliding phone, I think, brings a lot of really interesting ideas to the forefront because in today's day and age, when you look at the physical keyboard, a lot of people seem to think it's a dated design. Although a lot of people still like the physical keyboard. So I don't think that this is a working idea. I don't think this would even fly. If they were to make a Priv 2, they would have to make substantial changes to it. But I do like the idea that this patent for the Visa or the Victoria, whichever you want to call it, I like the idea of having that keyboard that slides up into the phone so you don't have to worry about moving the screen all the time, but then the keyboard pops out on the bottom, pops up and locks into place. I think that that would give you more stability. I think it would have a better keyboard as far as like this whole spongy design. I always felt like the keys and the keyboard on the Priv felt kind of spongy. I didn't really care for it myself and I thought it was too small. So to take that, make it a three row keyboard, that would give you more space for keys because it wouldn't be so condensed into the same area. And then to pull it up, lock it into place flush with the screen, you would have to worry about this typing lower than the phone and it would take away some of those other issues. So I really wish this would have seen the light of day and I thought it would be cool to talk about because I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video have never heard about it before. It really wasn't something like, if you were like really kind of nerded out like I was and still am with Blackberry, back in the day it was really exciting because it seemed like every couple of months we would hear about this new phone design and unfortunately this one never happened. Blackberry 10 kind of, you know, went the way of the Dodo a long time ago. It stopped getting updates, it stopped being refreshed, they stopped making devices and shifted over to an Android only platform strategy. So. Even if it saw the light of day as an Android design, or if you know one day maybe we see this in reality, if you know Onward Mobility decides that they want to make a bunch of different types of phones, and with this first design from Onward Mobility, we don't know what we're getting. All we know is it's a physical keyboard phone with 5G running Android. That's all we've been told, other than it's going to be a flagship phone. But I always thought that that idea would have worked really well because people like the slider. There's a lot of people that despite the fact that the processor in this overheats, despite the fact that it you know, gets bogged down and it gets real clunky and it freezes up and has other issues, despite the fact the battery life was not very good. I mean, there was a lot of despite the facts. The Priv, a lot of people really love it. So I think if they could find a way to use that patent or if that patent ever saw the light of day in the reality of some phone that got made from it, I think it would have been a big hit. I think people really would have liked it, would have drawn, been drawn to it, and really I think it would have been a bigger hit than the Priv. So anyway, that's just all I wanted to talk about in this video. Kind of a trip down memory lane for some people who did actually know about this device that never happened. But also if you didn't know about it, I thought it'd be cool to talk about it, go back, have a look at some of the pictures, the diagrams, and you can see you know, what they were working on. But I think that, it's kind of like when you look at what the Air Force did with the F-22 and the YF-23 back in the day, and you know, the F-22 is the one that won out, but there was actually another design that a lot of people really liked better than the F-22, and it just ended up being a prototype, and it never saw full production, it didn't get the award, but I felt kind of the same way with the Priv, and then also this Visa, or Victoria, whichever you want to call it. I thought that other design was actually the better one, and this is the one that ended up in production. So it's just one of those things where you go back, you look in history and see what happened with certain things and kind of look at the alternate timeline of maybe what could have happened if the other phone came out. But totally cool stuff. And I thought it was worth mentioning. I thought it would make an interesting video to talk about. And I don't know, let me know what you think. Do you have any thoughts on this? Do you wish this phone had gotten made? Um, do you think that the slider really is a good way to go when it comes to BlackBerry other than just a physical keyboard? Because of course, you get the full screen all the time and then you can use the touch screen keyboard and then you can also use the physical keyboard. So I think it adds a lot of different levels and dimensions to the phone as opposed to just a straight keyboard or a straight touch screen device. So lots of interesting stuff there to talk about, but that's all I've got in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.